Trump is holding a rally in South Carolina ahead of tomorrow's primary, and he's going after Joe Biden. Tomorrow we're going to win this state, and then we're going to tell crooked Joe Biden, you're fired. Get out of here. You're fired. We have to take over. They're going to destroy this country. We're going to end up in a world war. We'll end up in World War III. Under my leadership, you had virtually no inflation. Under Crooked Joe, you had energy prices reach the highest level in history. And speaking of Crooked Joe, he might want to hold tight to his short stairs and lace up his sturdy sneakers. His potential 2024 replacements are in town. Younger and more appealing blue state governors showing up at the White House today, forcing the president to come face to face with the very people who would love to take his job this very year. Gavin Newsom making himself at home earlier. The California governor chatting up with recently impeached DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. President Biden apparently too oblivious to realize what is going on and praised one of his possible replacements. Thank you. If I were smart, I'd leave right now. I want to thank Governor Newsom for his leadership in that. And by the way, I'm not sure how many people leave L.A. can do it in two hours to get there, or whether they're going to come back or not to <laughs> Las Vegas. But all kidding aside. <laughs> okay. But Gavin Newsom couldn't blow his cover yet. The slick back suck-up went on CNN to praise the president. We got to mind the gap between performance and uh, perception, no doubt about it. Is he able to make the case the way that you are? We all are making the case. It's but the is he able to do it the way you do, with the alacrity, the speed, the command? That well, you I was just with him. He's making a case. Huh. Meanwhile, Biden's frail age and mental decline is causing more alarm bells to ring for the Democrats and the media. A new report says Biden needs cheat sheets to answer pre-screened questions from donors during private fundraisers, and it's seriously freaking them out. Biden, Biden is also looking like a fossil in public. Video shows Joe hanging on for dear life to fellow octogenarian Nancy Pelosi while walking on the tarmac together. But don't you dare point any of this out. The media is giving a new liberal commandment to Democrats. Thou shall not fact check Joe Biden. I move that every newspaper in America quits doing any fact checks on Joe Biden until they fact check Donald Trump every morning on the front page. It is ridiculous yeah. that the New York Times fact checked Joe Biden on something. I mean, he vomits lies. Trump vomits lies. Okay. You know, the amazing part of this, Shannon, is the fact that if a Republican were to say that, that, you know, it, it, it's, it's time. The New York Times has got to fact check everything that uh, uh, Donald Trump says, I mean, or that Joe Biden says. I mean, they would criticize us until the cows come home. Yeah, I don't even know where to start with all of that. I will say, though, that the president should be happy that this time when Governor Newsom came to visit, the president was actually there. Remember when he went there in July of 2022 and he was like checking out the White House? The president was out of the country. I mean, this time at least he can keep an eye on him while he's there. But this fact-checking thing, okay, so Washington Post, not a conservative outlet, has given bottomless Pinocchios to President Biden. They have fact-checked him on a number of things. He has said things like gas was more than $5 a gallon when he became president. It was less than half of that. He used to drive a semi-truck. Don't even get a story on Corn Pop. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's gone on with this president. He said you had to sign a non-compete to work at McDonald's. And so I, we're just supposed to let everything go? I mean, some of these are pretty unbelievable things. So... Double standard. I mean, let's just fact check everybody and make it clean. America, the nightmare you're facing is just about over. Help is on the way. This is the most qualified man to be president of the United States. And let it be said that South Carolina created the biggest political comeback in American history. Thank you. So, I have a son, he's a very talented guy, and he works so hard, and we love him, and his wife is very good. She goes on, and Laura. And I want to thank Eric and Laura for doing such a fantastic job. And 
really amazing. They're amazing people. Uh, let's go down a little list of some of the people that are up here tonight because every one of them is a star in their own right. And uh, your lieutenant governor is going places. You do know that, right? Yeah. Pamela Abbott. And really going places. And Speaker of the House, Merle Smith, who's uh, coming up in a couple You know, some of these people are actually busy. He's running to get over here. But we want to thank you, Speaker of the House, a fantastic person, doing a great job for the state. An attorney general who's been in the news lately a lot, winning cases. Oh, I wish we had such a good attorney general like that in New York. Oh. He's a great attorney general. Alan Wilson, thank you, Alan. His father happens to be up here, too. Remember his famous, you lied, remember? He's been, he's been loved ever since, hasn't he? Yeah. Treasurer Curtis Loftus. Curtis, thank you very much. Wherever you may be, thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Mark Hammond, Secretary of State. Thank you, Mark. Ambassador, and this is a great ambassador, one of the best. Anytime we had a problem, I just called Ed McMullen, and he would solve the problem very quickly. Ed, thank you very much. We have a man who's done a really good job in the state, your South Carolina GOP chair, Drew McKissick. Thank you. Thank you. We have a highly opinionated group of people. I'll tell you, they've turned very positive on you very quickly. So you have a beautiful, beautiful state right next to you, North Carolina. We love North Carolina. In fact, they named their daughter Carolina. And I said, which state? She said both. She's very. I think, I think I know which state, but that's, that's okay. But they, uh, they have the most beautiful daughter named Carolina, so we love, we love the, both of them. We love them both very much, and we want them both very easily. And one of the reasons we want North Carolina is a man named Michael Watley, who looks like, who looks to me, we gave him our endorsement, and he looks to me like he's going to be going on to the National Republican Party as the boss. Michael Watley. Where is Michael? Michael, thank you very much. And he's going to be working with Laura. And we may be putting Kellyanne in the group, too. Do we like Kellyanne? We love Kellyanne. But uh, you're going to do a fantastic job, both of you. We appreciate it very much. What a job he's done in North Carolina. You know, that evening of 2020 with those votes coming in, we're leading in Pennsylvania. And all of a sudden, no, oh, something happened. It went boom. And then we're leading all over the place, Georgia, and then boom. And we're leading. But North Carolina, I said, when is North Carolina? Where is that going to go? When are they going to drop lots of ballots into that one? And you know what he did? He just kept that thing, and we never had a problem. And I said, that's my kind of guy. He had hundreds of lawyers. I had, how many lawyers did you have? He had 500 lawyers to make sure they didn't cheat and they didn't cheat in North Carolina. And I said, that's my kind of guy, so I appreciate it. Great job. We're very proud of you, and you're going to do a fantastic job.